Hey guys, how's it going? I'm just out here with Colton here again, and um, we are uh, changing things up a little bit. Um, as you can see by the title of this video, it's uh, ramping up safety, and we've decided as a company that we're going to start moving as instructors and pilots, so we're going to start moving to uh, wards. Everybody wearing a helmet, um, I think it's a really wise decision. Um, and this one here, this is my um, my uh, uh, Gentex, SPH5 Gentex um, helmet. I've had this helmet for years and I just stopped using it, uh, really unfortunate to say, just stopped using it because I didn't like the headset in it, it just was too loud once I tried out the Bose uh, that we've been using for the last few years now. Um, I just, I couldn't go back because it was so loud. And then just recently, um, I was able to do a modification to this one and uh, I was able to get a Bose headset inside the uh, the Gal or sorry the Gentex um, helmet. So really stoked on that. Um, it's nice and quiet now and I got the safety of the helmet so that's really good. And as you can see I'm, uh, I'm sporting some new gear here. Some of you guys like to ask uh, what kind of camera equipment I'm always using and stuff like that. So I'm currently filming this right now with the iPhone um, X, the iPhone 10. And, um, and then I've just uh, rigged this guy up. It's a little heavy on the head, but I think you guys are going to really enjoy the first person view um, of having this GoPro up here um, so that we can see kind of what's going on first person live view inside the cockpit. So today's exercise is going to be on low visibility flying and um, low visibility and confined area work flying. Um, I want you to slow down and start descending Colton and uh, we're going to go down into this area and see if we can do a confined area with uh, a lot of rain on the bubble, uh, visibility dramatically reduced. Okay, so as you guys can see here, definitely a low visibility day. Uh, multiple factors that are making this really hard. So dark, it's, uh, it's not a lot of light in here. Uh, we got all these clouds here in front of us, so that's making it really tough as well. And then probably the, the number one factor that's making it really tough is the rain on the bubble. So um, let's level out here, I think and we're going to start working our way back into this area. So there's a river just off our left here, if you can see, just over here. Yep. Uh, that river is going to go up, and then it kind of hooks to the right. So just up in front of us a little bit, um, there's a nice confined area that we're going to go to. And it's going to be far enough away from the clouds, so it's going to be safe. But as you can see, really, really tough to see right now yeah. um, how high we are above these trees and stuff. So one thing I do find, so our confined area is actually over in this corner here. Okay, so we can so start, start opening. opening. Yep. Nice. One thing I do find when you're struggling to see through rain is instead of just keeping your head stationary and just trying to look through it, but if you kind of move your head around a little bit, yeah. it gets a little bit of reference because it gets those raindrops moving in your in your view. And so I find that a that actually makes it a little bit easier to see. So. I want to land somewhere on one of these beaches here. I want you to pick a spot from here that you think is good, and then let's start talking about it. Okay, I like uh, kind of right at the edge of that sand there. Okay. Or, uh, yeah, right in the middle, kind of on that sandbar. All right, let's start doing all our S's. Yeah, you can definitely feel that drift kind of just pushing yeah. us over like that. Yeah. All right, yeah, so we're slowing rain down. Is gonna be a huge factor. Huge factor, right? So yeah. we're doing about 50 knots. We wanna be at 25, so power should be coming down. We should be slowing it right down. we to be right at treetop height. It's always trees on the departure path. Yeah. So a little bit lower, but not a ton. Looking at this approach angle here, how does it look? Uh, might wanna, it's pretty good, actually. Pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, yep. well, treetop height there, okay. 25 knots. Okay, we're getting a little low now. We'll start pulling in power. Really tough to see these trees, so keep yeah. your head moving around, keep looking around. Okay, no slower than this. And we want to be pulling in power up to There's about 94. 96, 97, whatever it's going to take. And we got a pretty decent climb. Yeah. Do you think we're going to be able to vertical out of here? Let's keep it under 90 now, that's good. Accelerating before we turn downwind. That's a really key factor as well. Before we turn downwind, because we were very slow, yeah. we want to make sure that we accelerate. We want to get at least you know, 40, 50 knots. Okay. Because that's one of the most dangerous times to turn downwind when you're low over obstacles like trees or yeah. whatever. Gotcha. And you're into wind turning downwind, we can get into LTE really easy. Loss of tail rotor effectiveness. Okay, I liked it. How did you like it? Was it, it good? Felt good, yeah, felt okay. good. I think we'd be able to get vertical out of there. Okay, sounds good. Let's go for it then. Sure. Definitely um, really nice to use your side windows that don't have nearly as much rain on them. Yeah, gives you a lot more visibility. Make, yeah, when you make the turn, kind of looking in there. Yeah. And that's why the uh, reconnaissance is so critical because when you're doing the turn, you can look out your side window a lot, and so way cleaner there. And you can look for those snags and everything that you may 
miss on the final approach. So if you already have them scouted, like right now in my mind, I've got a few scouted out. We know there's the deadheads with um, with no leaves on them. Yeah. We're going too fast. Let's slow down here. Going way too fast. We got that one tree that's kind of sticking, hanging out over the edge there. Yeah, keep slowing her down. Keep slowing her down. Keep slowing her down. And then now start pulling in your collective. That way we're not going to get into vortex ring state in that last part of the approach there. So pull in collective now, slow that descent rate down, slow it down. There you go. This is feeling better now. And now we got a loaded rotor disc, so you can see how high the power is already. Yeah. And then you can just slowly bring in the approach now. Looking out for that tree. That's right, we got that one. We got these guys underneath us here. Watching out for them. There's 92%, so that's looking good. I would shoot your approach all the way to the end, even if that's not where you're planning to land, okay. but just all the way into where that beach is there. And then once we're stable in a hover, then you can turn and, and hover over to where you want it to land. Okay. So, once we're in a hover, it looks to me like a right pedal turn will be a better option because okay. we got that tree a little closer there. Sounds good. All right, so tail's clear to the left. Yeah, it looks clear to me, yep. Good, watching our power, we're about 96, 98. So we're actually getting a bit of a downdraft in here. Yep. We're using more power than we normally would in the hover. All right, so landing on the sand looks like my best option. Those rocks are a little big, but... Okay, sand is good, yep. Good, looks like we're gonna have a little sloping ground, so we'll yep. just kind of take our time Feel out that slope. Should be nice and steady here. Excellent. So we're touching your skid first. There we go. Slowly bringing my skid down, cyclic in towards that hill. So a little off to the right. There you oh, go. Right, nice. And then as you come down, let's uh, do that seating check. Always want to make sure we're solid. So collective is padding, padding, padding. That's good. Yeah. Little pedals. We can go slightly back and forth. Just see if there's anything we're going to slip off of. It's feeling pretty steady. Yeah, pretty firm. Yep, and then now we feel comfortable we can lower that collective nice. all the way. Very nice. That was awesome. Pretty intense spot, eh? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so this is like, if it was a scale of 1 to 10, this is like a level 4 or 5 confined area. But then get the rain on the bubble with a little bit of clouds around. Yeah. This ramps up to like a 7 or 8. Yeah, this is a sure. pretty pretty tough confined area now. Yeah. Um, just by the, those little factors. So that's something to keep in mind. Sometimes you've been in swats again and again and you're super comfortable with them. Yeah. Then you go out on a day like today and all of a sudden it's just super hard, super crappy, right? And um, so we want to kind of keep that in mind. What's the conditions of the day? How are they going to affect my SWAT? Yeah. I've actually had SWATs where I was 100% comfortable going into land, and then I went down there another day and I just couldn't land. Yeah. It was just, it was too dangerous with that reduced visibility. So yeah. visibility is a huge factor. All right, let's get ourselves out of here. All right, right on. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. It is bright. We just flew, uh, believe it or not, like three miles south from where we just were. We were kind of over in that area back in there. And um, now it's bright and sunny out here, so pretty awesome. Uh, we just left the Pit Meadows Control Zone, landed at the heliports there. That was kind of neat. And um, now we're heading back to Abbotsford to do some auto rotation. So hope you guys liked this video. Um, if you did, hit that uh, like button and share it with somebody who you think would find this interesting. And we'll talk to you guys again later.